Hi everyone, Curtis is here from Goth Rider Creations and in today's episode we're going to sort out the neck of this guitar. Stay tuned! So, after the sanding fest of last episode, yeah that was a lot of fun, uh, now we're going to work on the neck. So, frets, joy. Now, what I'm going to do, I've already filed the back of the fretboard, so that is now dead flat. I have got myself, I know I was going to make it, but I have bought a resin nut. It is a universal sized one, I think for acoustic guitars, so the width is spot on. Um, I didn't want to go with the traditional thin slot and then the thin nut in the neck uh, in the fretboard and then it's sloping down I kind of like the idea of having something a bit chunkier and just a nut on its own now this is a little bit thin it is only where are we about four and a half five mil thick I would have liked something a bit chunkier but um, yeah I don't have time to make it so <sighs> Bezos to the rescue <sighs> Well thought. So uh, it is a little bit short, so I'm going to have to add something underneath it to bring it up slightly. Uh, I might use my favourite bits of uh, hacking balsa uh, just to raise it up enough. Uh, now I won't know how high it needs to be until I've got the frets in and you know obviously radiusing and all that so uh, yeah it'll have to wait for now but at least that's there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a temporary nut in for now get my long ruler get that taped and set up on there and I have got myself an app on the phone which is sorry so unprepared. Uh, it is called Fret Calc, and you literally just put in the scale length and the number of frets, and then it tells you exactly what length or thickness. <laughs> cut one, cut two, cut three, and it tells you exactly in millimeters what you need. So. Um, a lot of people do the whole printing them out, but uh, yeah, I've, I never get the scales right on these kind of things and I've never been able to join them together properly, so I'd rather not screw it up. So we're going to go old school, I'm just going to mark it using the ruler, and then uh, yeah, we'll get to cutting these things. Now I'm no ex expert on how to do this, this is my first ever time, and everything I know is from watching people on YouTube. but. One bit of advice I would get, buy one of these rulers that has the same either side. A lot of rulers in this country still have inches at the top and centimetres at the bottom and that really wouldn't help you. With this being this way, you can mark both sides and then you can have it spot on and then you don't need to worry about following the centre line and you know, special protractors or whatever else, you'll just have an absolutely dead straight two dots, connect the dots, there's your line. Right. And oh, the other thing as well is a lot of people go ape about needing specialist pencils for doing this kind of work. Um, I don't know who started it. I could blame Mr. Crow, but I'm not going to because he might have got it from someone else. But everyone seems to think that you need these, you know, very expensive mechanical pencils to mark something like this up. Now, granted, you do want to make sure that you get a nice crisp line and as thin as possible, because you know, frets are not that thick. But I have a trick. Whoops. All you need is a normal pencil and a pencil sharpener. This, this, this might take a sec. There you go, right. What we have there is a very sharp pencil. 
and you could use that. 50p's worth. There you go. Now, if you're not very good at sharpening these, these things regularly, then what are you doing doing woodwork, you know, not keep everything sharp. But if you're really, really worried, you get these mechanical pencils, and this is, because I like to be semi-precise at times, uh, 0.5 mil thick lead. I think that was a pack of three for a pound. If you want a 30 pound mechanical pencil, crack on. Me, we're on. I know I just said that I'm not going to need a centre line because, yeah, I'm... I kind of got a bit paranoid, alright? This is my first ever time and, mm, yeah, I don't want to screw it up. Alright, okay. And now, we shall use the protractor and we will mark this up. So, slightly embarrassingly, this is what we call the Fisher-Price My First Fretting Kit. Now I say embarrassingly, I'm not overly worried. Um, it was a rather large birthday of mine in January, and I had planned that I wanted to try and do this. So I asked my nearest and dearest, instead of getting me you know, too much alcohol or anything else, which thankfully they did anyway, uh, I asked them for some specific tools and bits to do this. So what we have is a really basic kit for doing guitar fretting. And it came with a set of pre-cut frets. Now, I'm not gonna claim the quality of these things, I haven't the first clue, but it'll do for the first guitar. What I did do though, was I bought a Radiusing block, I believe this is nine and a half inch, which I think, unless someone tells me otherwise, is the standard for the S-Type anyway. So, I'm guessing it's not the most expensive of kits, and these are probably the things that make Ben Crow, you know, cry in his sleep or something, but once I start building other guitars, I'll buy better stuff, but for this one, it'll do. So, what we're going to do is we're going to lay out the frets to make sure that we have the right length and whatever else, because if not, this ends pretty quickly. And then we will look at cutting. Now, I've got my trusty fret slotting saw, which, again, got online for only £10, so uh, it's a bit of a, a saving. Um, and I will just use Ben Crow's trick of putting a tape line where I need it to be 
and we will work out the th thickness of this so then we can go slightly under with not too much and we'll get these cut. something I learned from Bing Crow. Right, so that's now all cut. Nothing to do now but to butcher it. Well, that was a hell of a lot of fun. I said in the last episode that as much as it's, you know, I always say do these things cheap when you first start, but at the same time, I would give my left leg for a spindle sander yesterday. Well, oops. Now I understand why people have fret sliding jigs. Jeez, that's not fun. But we've now got those cut. Right, so that's all done. So now we're going to look at some inlays. I wanted to do something a little bit different, but kind of try and stick with the traditional side of things. So, stay. So I wanted to try and do the traditional dot work, obviously, double on the 12th fret, but I did want to go mother of pearl or whatever fake plastic stuff this is. Um, so I figured where I was going to have the purple fretboard I would work with that. Now unfortunately that's not happening anymore but I can put a little bit in there. So to go cheap, uh, I mean to go real a lot of people get aluminium or copper tube and then they recess that in and then they put whatever they want inside that. Now, the copper tube I have is all household plumbing or electrical stuff, so way too big. But what I found were these reusable, allegedly stainless steel straws for a pound. So literally, I'm just going to take one of those, drill it in, cut it down. And then we are going to fill it with the same pad we used for the fretboard. So I'm literally just going to get those inlaid in there and then super glue and powder, get all that done.
So, another day, more work. Yay. Now, not sure when the camera died last night, I do apologize, but we did manage to get all of the fret markers drilled in and we got all of the stainless steel tube. To be fair, it was a bit of a nightmare to sand, so it might have actually been stainless steel, who knows? But yes, so we have now all of those in there. Now, I did attempt to put in some purple mica powders and it really didn't look good. Um, it didn't have the right pop, it just didn't look right. So um, I carefully drilled out the two that I got in there, got the fretboard all cleaned up. Um, I did manage to put a nice little gouge in there when I was trying to use the hacksaw initially before I moved on to the Dremel. Um, but thankfully I've got a radius set anyway, so it's no biggie. Uh, one of the major things I did off camera, because mm, I've spent probably the last two episodes trying to convince you all that I was happy with the fact that I had to super glue in the chunks that got ripped out from the top. And I kept battling with myself and I just, I couldn't do it. Could not do it. So in the end, I spent about two hours on the sofa uh, watching movies with Mrs. Goth Mrs. Goth Rider. I need to get that right. Ooh. Um, and yeah, I sat there with a couple of uh, scalpel blades and I very carefully cut out the sections that had the tear out and then I glued in fresh chunks of balsa, sliced them down to about two mil and then painstakingly sanded them all flush, re-super glued them and done. So now hopefully you should barely even notice you've got the little chunks there there and if the height will allow me a couple more chunks there but now it looks homogenous i think that's the right word so yeah um if you look carefully you'll probably see that it doesn't match everything else but from a distance it's just strips of wood so i'm much happier with that so yay no more compromises <laughs> he says so next job we've done the markers that's all sorted so I want to do an initial radius on this before I put in the filler for the dots now I did go ahead and buy the radius block as I have shown you uh, what I have done just to give myself a bit of an idea of what's what is oh try and get more on camera shall we so if you put a straight edge across you can see the dip underneath and I have measured this out to be it looks to be about two mil so theoretically this center line should barely be touched these outer edges should go down two mil so that gives you an idea um, one thing I am going to try and do is use the orbital to take a little bit off the edges. I will mark 2mm on the side so I don't go too far. Um, and another thing I want to do is sort out my uh, levelling beam. Now I know you can buy them, you get beautiful ones from various companies, um, but you know me, cheap and cheerful. So what we have is a spirit level from, and you guessed it, my favourite shop two pounds so that is absolutely fine it's got a kind of a grip texture to that side and it is nearly the length of the fretboard so all we're going to do is take oh, oh, a piece of sandpaper masky tape super glue it to the bottom and we've got an instant radius beam now it's not as nice as some of the ones you can buy, um, I know places like Crimson do them and it's double edged and it's very well honed so then you can put one grade of sandpaper on one side, one grade on the other, great. But oh, when I can afford decent tools I will buy one. For now this will do the trick and even just with the texture on there it will actually make an awful sound. So I'm gonna get that sorted out now and then we'll start putting a radius on this thing. Eventually I will have to go to everyone else's favorite trick and just put the sandpaper on here and spend two hours painstakingly sanding it. But hopefully we won't have to get there for too long.
Right, so. <laughs> wow. Just doing that has pretty much got us a 10 inch radius at the top. And we have a 12 inch at the bottom. So if I wanted to do, I think Ben generally does that. If I remember correctly, he does like sort of 10 at the top end and then more like 11 or 12 at the bottom. But <laughs> that's what I've basically got. I've managed to get that just with that sander. I've got pretty much 10 up until the 12th fret and then we're more like 11, 12 coming down. So, again, it's luck, I suppose. So what I'll do now is get the radius block out and get cracking. Now, I'm no expert, but I am using the Luther for Builds technique of standing up, getting yourself level, trying not to twist, and just kill yourself standing. That took a while, but nowhere near as bad as I thought it was going to be. We are bang on 10 inch radius all the way through until the last two threads, and that's more like a 12. So now comes the dot work. Now, as I said before, I tried to do the purple and it didn't quite work, and the mica powders are awesome, but they work better in a long area. River tables, long sections. You know, you get all the swirls and you get everything in there. Um, these tiny little dots, it's just not going to show up. So I have got my metallic blue mica powder, which I am going to use. And I blame you for this, Rab, Rab Knox. Blue glitter. I half inch this from uh, Mrs. Gothrider's uh, craft supplies. So Rab, I love you and I'm blaming you for this. So. We've got blue glitter, blue mica powder, and I think, oh yes, we also have some pearlescence as well. So these ones do change colour depending on the light. So I think I've got a blue in here somewhere. That's green. That's there we go. And that has got a slight blue tinge to it so we're gonna mix up those three with our favorite oh, gorilla clear the epoxy of choice and uh, yeah I'm gonna get all of these filled in and then we'll leave it overnight and then tomorrow get more sanding Well, that was a hell of a lot of fun. Right, I'm going to hand sand the rest of this um, because I don't want to use the orbital anymore because I don't want to burn through all the work I've done. I don't want to use the radius block again because if I'm honest, I don't have a lot of flat sheets of sandpaper left. What I've got pretty much is oh, 
the pads for the random orbital but they go all the way down to 600 grit so I'm just going to carefully hand sand this get it down to about 300 um, I was watching Ravnox's most recent video this morning and the 300 grit looked to be a nice sheen but not too shiny and I'm with him on that one I yeah I don't do too shiny so what we will do is we will work through the grits now and it looks like we're going to 400 because I don't have any 300 so yep we'll get down to that and then we'll move on to the next bit And there we have it we have got I did actually find some 320 in that pile so yes that is now done to 320 and I am very very happy with that it's got a nice sheen to it it looks great now the only job is these inlays where I've been sanding the living hell out of it um, there were little bubbles in the resin um, it's designed for gluing stuff together rather than being used the way I've done so I kind of figured it might bubble up a bit um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and dig all of the sawdust out of here I mean I kind of like it, it almost looks like a kind of a marbled effect um, but I'm gonna try and dig as much of that uh, sawdust out and then fill that up with super glue and then that's all done and I've got my little logo there no, it is in no way a rip-off of Ben Crow's. I don't know what you're talking about. It's unique, completely. But yeah. So, yeah, dig this lot out, get that super glued, re-sanded, and then looks like we're gonna have to finally carve this neck. Hi everyone, and before you ask, no, I don't know the lottery results, don't ask, and no, Trump is not back in power, at least not yet, I hope, but yeah, um, so uh, it was a mad rush to try and get all of the footage done before the uh, GGBO deadline, which turned out not to be a solid deadline, thanks for that, that was really fun. But yeah, anyway, so uh, it was such a mad rush trying to get everything filmed and everything done that I literally just filled up memory cards to the point the cameras tried to break and then I just dumped in new memory cards, kept filming, kept filming and then every evening at about 9, 9.30 I rushed into the house, dumped all the footage onto the hard drive, went to sleep, came, got up again, went to work, came home and carried on. And that was about two weeks solid, I think, in between various bits and pieces around the house. So yeah, um, I've got so much footage sat there that I didn't even know what would constitute an episode or not. And yeah, it turns out there's a hell of a lot of footage. So what I thought was a one episode is at least two, possibly even three. So I cut it there. Um, I wanted to do a little outro so this didn't look weird, um, but yeah, so uh, next episode will be me carving the neck, so uh, yeah, um, 
thank you to everyone that's uh, commented and subscribed up until now. Uh, please do um, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, thank you so much to everyone that has been commenting and going on about the, the, the work I've done with this guitar. I'm really proud of it and it's so awesome to have a community of people, you know, predominantly GGBO contestants or fans who know their guitars, who are raving about a lunatic who's never built one before making it out of balsa. So, I've, yeah, it's really been touching, especially experienced guitar players telling me how much they are really impressed by what I've done so thank you so much everybody um, I've been catching up on a lot of builds over the last few days so if you get random comments it's me you know throwing some love everyone's way I've been really enjoying watching everything um, so yeah I'll probably do a few more shout outs to people as I check out their builds but I just haven't had time to watch everyone's videos you know so yeah uh, massive thanks to everyone and uh, yeah I'll see you on the next one take care